The NC1 Acura NSX has three electric motors and one combustion engine. In this video, we are going to identify the components of the powertrain and discuss how each connects to the others. First, let's look at the big picture. In this component location diagram from Honda, we can see how the powertrain system sits in the chassis. In the front is the twin motor unit. It is connected to the motor power inverter module, which sits below the center console and connects to the intelligent power unit, which rests behind the seats. In the very back, we can see the rear motor and the traditional engine. Also near the rear is the powertrain control module. And in the front, there are some supporting components, such as coolant, radiator, and fuses. Now, what does each of these components actually do? Let's consider this in steps, from driver input to vehicle output. First, the driver can select various drive modes, and the sports hybrid all-wheel drive will help with that. The powertrain control module also manages whether the vehicle does or does not use electric power. We'll make a separate video to cover the details of those two decision-making components. For now, we're going to look at the structure of the workhorse components of the system. If the powertrain control module is the CEO of the operation, then the intelligent power unit is the COO. The IPU is this entire unit that rests behind the seats. First, it contains the lithium ion battery pack, which contains four modules with 18 cells per module. Each is connected in series, and a total of six thermistor type sensors within the modules relay information to the battery condition monitor module. The BCM is the caretaker of the battery. It controls charging and discharging based upon information about the battery's current health. By gathering information about the temperature, state of charge, and demand for power, the BCM maintains safe limits for the battery. Of course, the BCM needs to access all that information so that it can make appropriate decisions. We've already seen that the temperature sensors relay information directly to the BCM. If the temperature is outside of a specified range, the BCM will reduce the amount that the battery assists and regenerates. Looking at the assist section of this graph, we can see that when the temperatures are below negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit, the BCM will prevent any battery assistance. Between negative 22 degrees and 32 degrees, the BCM allows gradually more assistance. Then the amount of assistance mostly levels out until a high temperature causes the BCM to again limit assistance. The same is true for regeneration. Consider that the middle line is 0% regenerating, while the bottom line is 100%. Basically, it's upside down. The colder or hotter it is, the less regeneration the BCM will allow. Next, the BCM considers the battery's state of charge. The junction board contains a battery current sensor, which sends information about the current to the BCM. From that information, the BCM calculates the battery's state of charge. Here, the BCM will not provide any assistance if the SOC is too low. Once the SOC reaches an appropriate level, the BCM will provide gradually increasing amounts of assistance, which caps out and levels off when the SOC is about a third full, if this chart is drawn to scale. The opposite is true for regeneration. Again, consider the bottom line to be 100% regeneration, because this graph is the inverse of the assist graph. The BCM will allow full regeneration until the SOC reaches a somewhat full charge, then reduces the amount of charge until it restricts charging altogether when the SOC nears 100%. With all that information, the BCM monitors and controls the levels of battery assist and recharge. And it caps the assistance at safe amounts too. Oh, and it also monitors and controls the module fan control, calling for cooling when the temperatures rise to a certain point. The intake for the air is behind the HVAC unit. The BCM calls for air from the cabin or HVAC unit, which allows air to pass through the battery pack and the heat sink of the DC-DC converter, from which it is discharged outside of the vehicle. The DC-DC converter converts high voltage current into low voltage current to maintain the 12 volt battery's voltage. If the DC-DC converter becomes too warm, the BCM will disable it and the 12 volt charging system indicator will illuminate. The junction board has a few more key roles to play, so let's return to it for a moment. Not only does it house the battery current sensor, but it also controls flow from the battery pack, as instructed by the BCM. 
When there is a call for current, the bypass connector switches on first and activates a bypass resistor, which protects the system by limiting the rush of current until the capacitors in the MPI and DC-DC converter are charged. Then the high voltage contactor closes and the bypass contactor opens, allowing full functionality. The IPU also contains the motor control module and the twin motor unit ECU, which control the rear and front motors respectively. Both systems are controlled based on torque requests from the PCM and the state of charge from the BCM. The rear motor is connected to the engine crankshaft, is AC synchronous, and is both water-cooled and cooled by engine coolant that runs through the motor housing. The twin motors in front have a similar setup. Now, we need to discuss how the information about torque and the battery state of charge gets to the motors. It is relayed from the IPU by the motor power inverter. The motor power inverter sits below the center console and is liquid cooled. It contains a power module, gate drive circuit, capacitor, and temperature sensor. Not only does it convert the DC of the battery into the three phase current of the motor and reverse, but it also communicates information via three phase cables that are sheathed in orange aluminum pipe. These cables connect the IPU subjunction board to the MPI, the IPU DC-DC converter to the underhood fuse slash relay box, and the IPU subjunction board to the electric AC compressor. In our next video, we'll cover a little bit more about how the driver interfaces with these systems, including the sports hybrid all-wheel drive modes, the PCM's jobs, and how the MPI converts energy. Thank you for watching.